So here are ten most asked questions about Japan Transport IC cards, like this one or this one. Which one is refundable? Which one is not refundable? How to get the refund? Can you use this card to get on bullet trains? Where can you use it? How much does it cost? How should you use it? Let's start right away with question number one. Can you travel Japan without one of these transport cards? Absolutely yes. You can travel Japan without a transport card. What you do is that you just buy a normal paper ticket every time you board a train or subway. If you use a bus, you can pay by cash before getting off. For bullet trains or Shinkansen, you can buy a ticket online or at a ticket counter or at a ticket vending machine. If that's the case, then why do you want to use a transport card? The reason is that using a transport card in Japan can save you some money and more importantly, save you time. Let me explain. Public transportation is very popular in Japan. When you travel in Japan, unless you rent a car, you'll be using a lot of public transportations. And every time you want to board a train or a subway, you need to buy a ticket before boarding by cash. You insert the ticket at the entrance gate like this. It'll come back out on the other end of the gate. You take it back, keep it, and when you get off at your final destination, you insert that ticket at the gate to go out. If you have a transport card, you can avoid the hassle of stopping to buy a ticket and dealing with all the little coins every time you want to board a train, which is quite often. You just tap the card at the entrance gate and let the card pay for the fare automatically. Using some sort of transport card is a standard in cities like Tokyo or Osaka. So yes, it helps you move faster and save some money at the same time. Is it really cheaper than buying a normal ticket? Is it cheaper than a train pass? A transport card is not a discounted ticket. It's just a kind of debit card that you use to pay for the train tickets and other stuff. Whereas a train pass is like a set of discounted train tickets that you have to travel a lot for it to pay off. A train pass may not help you save money if you don't have a wise travel plan, but an IC card will save you some money each time you get on a train or a subway. It's not a lot, only a few yen per trip, but it adds up over time. So yes, it's slightly cheaper than buying paper tickets. For example, from Harajuku station to Omotesando station by subway, the paper ticket is 180 yen, but if you pay by an IC card, the ticket price is 178 yen. So what's a transport card in Japan anyway? A transport card in Japan is known as an IC card. It's a prepaid and rechargeable card. There are basically three types of IC cards in Japan. The first one is the 28-day IC cards for visitors to Japan like the Welcome Suica card or the Pasmo Passport card. These cards are only valid for 28 days and it will become invalid on day 29 automatically. The second type is the long-term IC cards like this Suica card. This card only becomes invalid 10 years after your last use of the card. And the third type is the digital IC cards. So there's a digital version of the Suica card or Pasmo or Ikoka card that you can get on your smartphone. So where to get an IC card and how much does it cost? The card itself is free of charge. It doesn't cost you any money, but there's a refund fee of about less than two US dollars that you may or may not have to pay when you return a long-term IC card. Let's talk about this later in this video. 
Basically, if you get a 28-day IC card for visitors like the Welcome Suica card or the Pasmo Passport card and top up 1,000 yen to the card, you will have 1,000 yen on the card balance that you can spend. The same for a digital IC card on your phone. When you get a new IC card on your phone and top up 1,000 yen, you will have 1,000 yen on the card balance. But if you get a normal IC card like this Suica card, there's a deposit of 500 yen that you won't be able to use. So when you first top up 1,000 yen to this card, you will only have 500 yen on the card balance, but you can get back the 500 yen deposit if you return the card. So basically, an IC card is free of charge. Previously, you could easily get an IC card at a ticket vending machine, a ticket counter, a JR travel service center, but since June 2023, they've suspended the sales of the long-term Suica Passmo cards, which, according to their press release, is due to the global chip shortage. So now, except for the monthly commuter cards, the long-term cards are no longer available at the ticket vending machines. This might be just a temporary thing. Hopefully, they will be available for a purchase at the ticket vending machines again. But for the moment, for example, you can get the Pasmo passport card at ticket counters of the KQ line at Haneda Airport. You can get the Welcome Suica card at the Welcome Suica card vending machines at the airports or get the Welcome Suica or Suica card at JR travel service centers at the airports or at some major stations in Tokyo. But keep in mind that they might be sold out. If possible, it's best to get a digital IC card on your smartphone. In my experience, it's really convenient. You can charge the card right on your phone using a debit or credit card, or you can charge it at a machine using cash, just like using a physical IC card. The names are so confusing. Suica, Pasmo, Ikoka, etc. How are they different? Can I use the Suica card in Osaka and Kyoto? There are many train operators in Japan and they sell their own IC cards. That's why you see many names. But the good thing is there's only one IC card network in Japan and all of the cards use this same network. So their names are different and they have different point accumulating programs, but they are all IC cards. So function wise, they are the same and they can be used across the network, across Japan. So yes, you can use the Suica card in Osaka and Kyoto, and you can also use the Ikoka card in Tokyo. So just get any card that you like, and you can use them anywhere in Japan that applies the IC card system. You just need to pay attention to the refund part. Speaking of refund, which card is refundable and which is not refundable? And how to return an IC card and get your deposit money back? The long-term cards are refundable and the short-term cards are not refundable. Remember the deposit money when you get a long-term IC card? If you want to get back that deposit money and the remain balance, if any, you have to go to a ticket counter of the same train operator. For example, if you get a Suica card which is issued by the JR East and want a refund, you have to go to a JR East ticket counter in Tokyo areas. You cannot have a refund in Osaka or Kyoto because the JR East does not operate there. That's the area of the JR West company. And if you get an Ikoka card which is issued by the JR West, you have to get the refund in Osaka, Kyoto areas. When you return a long-term IC card, there's a return fee of about less than two US dollars that you may or may not have to pay when you return a long-term IC card. If your card balance is zero, you won't have to pay the return fee and you will get back your 500 yen deposit money 
But if your card balance is not zero, you will have to pay the return fee. In the past, they used to have this return machine at the airports, which was super convenient to get the deposit money refunded. But now I'm not sure if it's available. Now you have to come to a main counter to get back the deposit money. This refund thing has actually been a problem for many visitors. They forgot or they didn't have time to get the refund, all sorts of reasons. That's why they introduced the short-term 28-day cards like the Welcome Suica or the Pasmo Passport card. They are not refundable, which also means you don't have to make time to do the refund. How to use up all the balance on a card When you have a small amount of money left on your IC card balance, go to a shop or a convenience store, buy something, and then go to a main cashier and ask the cashier staff to use all the balance on the card first and you pay the difference in cash. That way you will have zero yen on the card and you can return it without paying for the return fee. Can I use an IC card to get on an express train or a bullet train? You won't be able to just use an IC card to get on an express or a bullet train because the IC cards can only pay for the basic fare of a train ticket or sometimes they call it passenger fare and a ticket of a commuter train is only composed of basic fare whereas a ticket of an express or a bullet train is composed of a basic fare and an express fare so you have to buy an express ticket in addition to an IC card to be able to board an express train or a bullet train. For example, this is the liner ticket, meaning the express ticket of the Skyliner, which is an express train from Narita Airport to Ueno Station in Tokyo. So to get on the Skyliner using the express ticket and the IC card separately, you will need to insert the express ticket and tap the IC card at the gates, like this. Another option is you can choose to buy a total ticket of an express or bullet train, which includes both basic fare and express fare in one piece of ticket, and you only use that total ticket to get on the train. For example, this is a total ticket of the Narita Express, which is an express train from Narita Airport to Tokyo. This total ticket has a breakdown of the total price, which includes the basic fare and the express fare. So in this case, you don't need the IC card. You just insert this ticket at the gate because it already includes the basic fare. But there's an option that allows you to link a total ticket of a bullet train onto an IC card so that you can just tap the IC card at the Shinkansen ticket gates to board a Shinkansen. So how to link a Shinkansen ticket to an IC card? On the back of an IC card, there's a card number. All you have to do is to register that number to your Shinkansen ticket. If you buy a Shinkansen ticket at a ticket counter, you can ask the staff to do the linking for you. If you buy a Shinkansen ticket online, you can register your IC card number and link the IC card to the Shinkansen ticket yourself. It only takes a few clicks. Here's an example when you buy a Shinkansen ticket on SmartX, which is the JR official ticket reservation site from Tokyo to Kyoto, Osaka direction. After you completed your reservation, you can select Designate IC card and then link each of the Shinkansen ticket to an IC card. If you already had an IC card registered beforehand, you can simply select that IC card. If not, then you can add an IC card at this step. You can either scan the back of the card or input the number yourself. Then give it a name so that you know whose card it is. In our case, we had two adult tickets and one child ticket. By the way, you need to have one IC card per person 
If you travel with kids from 6 to 11 years old, you can get an IC card for kids because the fares for them are half the price of adults. Kids under 6 years old are free of charge. And then make sure to link the child ticket to the child IC card. After you've done this linking, you can use the IC card to tap at the Shinkansen ticket gates when you board a Shinkansen. So there you go. These are the questions I got asked the most about Japan Transport IC cards. Whichever IC card you get, the best practice is to just top up a small amount of money like 20, 30 US dollars or the amount you need for a day or two and then recharge the card if you need to. You can recharge the card at the train stations or even at many convenience stores. I highly recommend check out the official websites of the train operators that you are going to use in Japan like the JR East or JR West or PASMO for the latest and official updates about the IC cards before your trip. Well, I hope this video answered some of your questions about the transportation IC cards in Japan. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to help me continue to create more videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care and have a nice day.